Have you heard anything about your next contract with Royal Caribbean? Tips for fashion merchandising majors that are graduating in May. Did you ever meet anyone on the ship that you had a thing with? Embarrassing ship memories. I wasn't gonna answer this question because I feel like it might stir the pot. What's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hello, my name is Jordan and I would love it for you to join our fam. For today's video, I wanted to sit down and film another question and answer video because you guys really seem to enjoy these and I personally really love sitting down and answering any questions you guys have, especially because I do get a lot of repeated questions on different videos and things like that. So I asked you guys on my Instagram to send me any questions you guys had, things you were curious about, and the responses were absolutely insane. I got so many questions, which is amazing, so thank you guys. And I don't think I'll be able to get through all of them in just one video, so if you guys want to see a part two of all the questions I didn't get to, I can definitely do that. Another thing to mention, my 10K giveaway is now closed as of the posting of this video, so I will be announcing the winner tomorrow on my YouTube, so make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. And one more thing to mention before we hop into today's video, I'm so excited to be partnering with Ana Luisa on today's video. I have actually worked with them before. You guys know I absolutely love everything about their company, their jewelry, and what they stand for. So if you guys are not familiar with Ana Luisa, it is a jewelry brand that makes all their jewelry with sustainable materials. So they are a completely carbon neutral company, which is so incredible. Not to mention the jewelry is so cute and such high quality for such an affordable price. So I just wanted to show you guys what I'm wearing today. First and foremost, the necklace set I'm wearing is the Michelle set. I think it is to die for. It's so trendy and so cute. What I really love about the set is that all three necklaces come separately so you can obviously wear them stacked like I am right now, but you can also, you know, mix and match and layer with different necklaces if you wish. Then of course on my wrist I just have two bracelets and I absolutely love them together. So uh, the first bracelet I have is the Alina bracelet and then the other bracelet I have is the Roma bracelet which is like gold beads and I think that these pair together really really well. I love the look of stacking bracelets and these both have an adjustable clasp which is really nice so you can kind of gauge how big or small you want it and I have a really really small wrist and these fall like the perfect spot. And then I have two rings on so the first one is just the slim rope twist ring. Um, I got it in a size 7 and I think this is such a fun and unique ring and then the other ring I have on is just the Chloe ring this is like a braided ring I think it's so cool and overall I've just been loving the jewelry I literally wear it every single day and I get so many compliments on my jewelry people always ask where it's from and they are having a Black Friday promotion going on so if you want to get more information about that make sure to check the link in my bio and with all that being said let's finally hop into the questions Starting off strong with one of my favorite topics to talk about, how many countries have you traveled to? So I'd have to think about this for a minute. Let me, let me count, okay? I think I have been to 14 countries, if I'm counting correctly. I feel like I might have missed one or two, but we're gonna go with 14. How do you manage your time? This is a great question. Coming from someone who's always been extremely busy, I'm talking since a very young age, I've always, you know, been going from thing to thing. So that has really taught me how to manage my time well. And the biggest tip I could tell you is to plan out your day. So I am a huge fan of lists. I make a to-do list, so I make two lists for every single day. The top list is things I need to get done, and then the second list is what I want to get done. I also really utilize an agenda so I write out everything that I have for the entire month like a couple days before that next month is going to start. So I write in my work schedule, skating schedule, um, all my YouTube plans, things that I want to upload on what day, and then I also fill in any appointments I have for that month. Usually there's not that many but I like to see it all out in front of me and yeah and then I do also transfer all of my YouTube video uploads onto a whiteboard calendar that's on my desk. Favorite YouTubers. So my all-time favorite YouTuber to watch is 
David Dobrik and Emma Chamberlain. I also really, really love watching Tara Michelle vlogs and I actually got to meet her last year when I was working on the cruise ship. She was actually cruising with her family um, for New Year's, I think, and I ran into her on the jogging track on the last day of the cruise and it literally made my life <laughs> and she was the nicest person ever like it was such an amazing coincidence and i'm really grateful and then someone who's not as well known but he does have quite a large following is jordan cunningham he is best known for hiding the little mini like plastic babies around his college campus that video went like viral and he's just hilarious all around so i do really enjoy watching him while we're on the topic of youtube the next question is why did you start your channel so a few people asked me this and i've always loved watching youtube and i've always been super passionate about filming things and editing videos like since i was really really young i used to make all sorts of like music videos with vidstar and stuff like that once i got a little bit older and i got more into fashion and things like that i just really wanted to start my own channel and it took me a couple years to finally just do it but i want to say i started actually filming videos in like the middle of high school or so. All in all, I just love being creative and it's just another creative outlet for me. Which city is your dream city? Oof, this is a tough one. Um, I feel really grateful I have been able to travel a lot and see a bunch of the world, but there is so much more to experience. Going off of the places I have visited so far, I would either say London or Venice. I actually did a study abroad program in London a couple years ago for the summer and it was the best experience ever. So I kind of got a feel for what it would be like to actually live there. And I just love city life. But on the contrary, I absolutely fell in love with Venice. I just love the culture and the people and just everything about it just really spoke to me and I am Italian so I loved Italy all around but I think Venice was my favorite city that we visited. Have you heard anything about your next contract with Royal Caribbean? So yes but no and I will explain why. So the CDC just recently lifted the cruise ban which is amazing news for the cruise industry because now we have the okay to sail with guests again um, but it is a long process to get us up and running again. We have to get all of our crew back and all the new procedures have to be in place and all the sanitization and just everything needs to be working smoothly. So they do need to start slowly getting ships back, sending crew back to the ships. They have to do a mandatory quarantine before even getting on the ship. Then they have to quarantine while they're on the ship and they're gonna do some test runs and stuff like that before they even think about guests coming on board. And Royal did suspend sailings until December 31st of 2020, so I'm hoping by the new year we will be able to see guests on board. As far as I am concerned, I do not yet have an assignment, but I am ready to go whenever I get that call. So it could be next week, it could be a month, it could be two months. Um, I'm just ready and prepared and they will let me know and it's gonna probably be a very quick process. What are you doing right now while you wait to go back on the ships? So right now um, I'm working, I'm skating a lot just to keep up with my skills and also it's just like a form of therapy for me. I love being on the ice. If I could be on the ice all day and all night, I would. And then of course I'm spending quality time with my family, my parents, my dog, and my friends. And also I have been spending so much of my time on my YouTube. I've really been focusing on filming and putting out really great content for you guys. So I've been working so hard on that because it's such a passion of mine and I have all this extra time to give to YouTube. So how much did you work at the ship? I was on my last contract for seven months. It was a seven month contract and then I did five shows a week and then I also did other jobs as well. So I did all skates, I did spotlighting for the other shows and I did um, parade. And then of course we had weekly packs drill and bi-weekly crew drill. Tips for fashion merchandising majors that are graduating in May. 
This is a lovely question. Um, the fashion industry is very cutthroat. It's a very hard industry to make it in. So my biggest tip would to not get discouraged. Um, just keep trying to apply for as many internships and jobs as you can because eventually you will find one that wants you to work with them. And you have to keep in mind that you cannot start at the top. You have to build your way up in the industry. So even if you get a job you're not entirely excited about and it's not what you want to be doing as a career, it is a stepping stone to get to where you want to be. Think of everything as an opportunity and as a growing point. And another amazing tip a professor gave me when I was in college was to start building yourself as a brand. This makes a huge difference in the fashion industry. So any type of outlet you have to build yourself as a brand and make more of a portfolio, the better. So using your social media as a portfolio for your skills. And also if you have any other avenues you're interested in, such as like photography or for example, YouTube is a great platform Form. Would you give up coffee for one million dollars? This is a funny question because you know, you know how obsessed I am with coffee. Um, but to put it plain and simple, no. For one, money does not equal happiness. Secondly, I love coffee way, way, way too much and coffee is happiness for me. It's not that I couldn't give it up, I just don't want to. I'm not dependent on coffee, I could go the whole day without drinking it, but I don't want to. So, I will pass on that. <laughs> Favorite part of 2019 and 2020? So, I absolutely love this question. Such a positive question. My favorite part of 2019 was graduating college. That was such a big achievement for me. College was such an amazing four years of my life. So, to close out that chapter obviously was bittersweet, but it was an exciting moment for me. And for my grandma to see me graduate college, that was just really amazing and of course 2019 was also the year I was offered my dream job and actually got to start my dream job so can't complain about that I actually got the job offer in January of 2019 so I started the year off strong yeah 2019 was a really great year for me 2020 has definitely been rocky really really hard for a lot of people for everyone really and even though there were a lot of bad things to come out of 2020, the most important thing is to find the good. That is like one of my life mottos, is to find the good in every situation. And even though I am home a lot longer than expected and I'm still waiting to return to my job, 2020 has been a blessing in disguise because I've gotten to have a lot more quality time at home. I wouldn't have had this much time to do that if I was working because I was supposed to leave for my contract back in June. So I would have only been home for three months. If you weren't a figure skater, is there another passion you would pursue? So I have way too many passions in life. So I try to dip my toe in everything that I can. Obviously YouTube is one of my biggest passions. So if I could turn this into a full-time job, I would be absolutely over the moon ecstatic. And I've said it before, but I really do want to work in the fashion industry when I do close out the skating chapter of my life because I did go to college for that and I do have a degree in it. So I do want to work in fashion. I want to start my own business, but baby steps. We'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Favorite part of study abroad. So I did just mention this, but if you guys are newer here, I did actually participate in a study abroad program. I want to say it was like junior year of college. Yeah, junior year. And I studied abroad in London, England, and it was the best experience ever. And my best friend from that program I do still talk to, and it's like two and a half years later. But I would have to say my absolute favorite thing about the program was just getting to experience a different country and culture all around. I did take a fashion styling class and a majority of that class was based around the city, which was an even better way to, you know, fully immerse yourself in the culture. And my professor was incredible and the school is amazing. And I just all around 10 out of 10 experience. Highly recommend it if you are in high school or in college and you're thinking about it, 100% you should do it. Do you prefer working out at home compared to a gym? If so, why? 
Um, I can't say I prefer one over the other. I do enjoy both. Right now, I've just been working out at home because I don't feel comfortable working out in a gym yet. I just don't want to work out in a mask, and I love the accessibility of working out at home. I have the freedom to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I have a decent amount of equipment, which is really, really nice. I don't have any sort of cardio machine, and that kind of sucks because I do love the elliptical, but I have a jump rope. I can go run out side there's a bunch of different ways I can get my cardio in so this next question what is the worst gift you have ever received so <laughs> I wasn't gonna answer this question because I feel like it might stir the pot but it will only stir the pot if he watches this video and I highly doubt he will and it's funny so I want to share it with you guys one of my ex-boyfriends one year gave me an interesting birthday gift so he was hyping up this gift for months. I'm talking two months saying how excited I'm gonna be when I get this gift. So I'm like, what the heck could it be, right? And then eventually the time comes for me to receive my birthday gift. And when I tell you I was speechless, even to this day, I can't formulate many thoughts about it. But he gave me, are you ready for it? He gave me an orange traffic cone for my birthday. That was my gift. Like, when I tell you I should have won an Oscar for that performance, I had to act unfazed. If only I could like be a fly on the wall for that experience, if I could like go back in time and watch it happen. Oh my lord, guys. <laughs> and I'm really not trying to start any beef. It is pretty funny now, but like, what are you thinking? What motivates you to work hard? So there's a lot of things that motivate me. First of all, I just really, really, really want to be successful in life. So I kind of get that drive from within. Um, but I also get extremely inspired when I see other people doing big things, especially around my age. It just gives me that much more drive. My parents also really motivate me because they've always taught me to have a really strong work ethic and they have given me so many opportunities in life to succeed. So I would say kind of everything. <laughs> Who is the coolest gay you know? Morris, it's you. Even though you asked me the question, it's you. You're my fave. So a few people asked this next question. Who was or still is your biggest inspiration in life? I would probably say my grandma is because she believes in me so much. She's like my biggest supporter when it comes to everything, especially skating. She's like my number one fan. She's such a kind person. She's traveled the world. She literally traveled to Europe with her best friend in her 70s. She's a queen, um, and she also was a social worker when she was younger, so I'm just really inspired by the fact that she was so committed to helping others, and I just love her so much, so I would say she is my biggest inspiration. What was your experience breaking into show business? For me, uh, the transition was pretty smooth. Like I said before I left, I had no clue what I was in for, and you just get thrown into it and you're immersed in it constantly because there is no like transition period. It's your home and then you're there. I was the only new hire on my contract. Everyone else had done professional shows either on the ship or other tours as well. So I was brand new to the showbiz and everyone was so welcoming and, and I think the transition for me was really easy. I just adjust to change very well. Not gonna lie, I did have one mental breakdown and it was so random because I wasn't even stressed. I think it was just a lot of information all at once. But yeah, I absolutely love the process of rehearsing and training and just getting to know everyone. It was a really fun and hectic two and a half weeks, but would not change it for the world. What are your best tips for getting that first contract? This is a great question as well. So for anyone looking to start your career in the show business industry, I would say first and foremost, invest in getting a professional videographer to film your audition tape because you want it to look extremely clean cut and professional so when the company does receive your audition information it doesn't look like it was just thrown together yesterday work on your consistency for jumps and work on as many show tricks as you can because 
show skating is way different than competing. It's not all about the jumps and the spins and the points. It's about the performance quality. So work on your skating skills, work on your facial expressions, and work on getting your show tricks as strong as possible. And of course, make sure your resume looks nice and organized. You don't want it to have too much information, but you also don't want it to be completely bare. Did you ever meet anyone on the ship that you had a thing with? Yes, I did. We're gonna just leave it at that. Not going in detail, but yes. How old were you when you first started skating? I get asked this almost every single day. I was four, almost five years old. Embarrassing ship memory. So this one I really, really wanna answer, but off the top of my head, I cannot think of a single thing. So I will save that for part two. I still have a ton more questions to get through, so I will keep those for a part two video, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. It will be coming in the next few weeks or so, but I really hope you guys enjoyed today's question and answer video. Thank you for sending me in all your responses. Seriously, I appreciate it, and I love sitting down and talking to you, and you guys are my friends, so I feel like we're just like having a conversation, even though it's me talking to a camera lens, but still, I feel like I'm talking to you guys right now but yeah that is all I have again make sure to check out Anna Luisa I will have the links down below you don't want to miss out on that I love you guys to the moon and back thanks again for watching and your support and I will see you in my next video bye guys